I am going to talk about renewable energy sources, which is very important part when we talk of sustainable development, whether it is in the rural areas or whether it is in the urban areas, because that is the need of the hour. Whatever conventional energy sources we are using, basically they are fossil fuel based. That is based on the coal, based on the gas, and also based on the oil, diesel or kerosene or uh, petrol and so on. So when we use these uh, non-renewable energy sources the, or fossil fuel based sources, then what happens? They generate a lot of, you see, pollution in the air or, or otherwise also, and thereby uh, they contaminate and they bring uh, the environment and change our ecological balance and also uh, climate change is occurring at a very fast speed. If you are, might be reading every day, every other day in the newspaper that uh, in humanity is going to face a lot of problem because of the climate change. So we need to do something and one of the very viable option is using of alternate energy sources that is renewable energy sources. So this has been found by various researchers also and one of the researcher Dr. Richard Smalley, he was a Nobel laureate in chemistry. He also uh, 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 researched on what are the top problems which the, we are going to face in the coming time. So he also said that population is increasing because of the resources are limited, eco, uh, our, uh, earth has limited resources for us but we have to consume it more if the number of if people living on our universe is more. So that is causing stress to various resources whether it is water, whether it is land, or whether we are having the this on the, you see, housing or for our basic food also. So that is an area of concern. Democracy is there, education very much required for development, but still a lot of people are still uneducated. If you see in numbers, around 20% or so people are illiterate in generally, mainly in the developing uh, and underdeveloped world. Disease is increasing, new diseases are coming, uh, old diseases also are not yet being able to, you see, get the 100% uh, cure. For example, cancer is existing. And in the pandemic situation, which we have faced now till from the past two years, we have seen how it has changed the, uh, us, how it has changed the world and our uh, working style and living style also, how much adverse it has impacted us in almost all the dimensions of our life. Terrorism and war, we are we read every other day in the newspaper that some attack is there because of terrorism. War, we know that nowadays Ukraine and Russia, that has been uh, initiated. So this is also a very, you see, issues across the world, which uh, needs to be, uh, we need to find a solution because uh, they are hindering, they are going to hinder the development of mankind. Poverty, another issue, people are still poor. And because of the pandemic and climate uh, condition and climate change, this poverty uh, the stress level of poor on the poor is increasing day by day if you read the newspaper every day because climate change means less food less water and thereby and more uh, disasters so these are impacting poor more uh, so poverty is also increasing uh, if we see then uh, environment we know how environment is being degraded because of the anthropogenic activity the way we are going in for the development we are focusing on just economic development that we should become rich but at what cost by using the fossil fuels by having more industries but not uh, deploying the environment or ecological uh, you see friendly processes and machines so that is affecting our environment and uh, creating a lot of issues then food uh, we know we, we are food stressed in the world if we see people still go hungry they do not have sufficient food to survive so a lot of issues with regard to their health issues and thereby their productivity and other social issues also occur because of this particular problem. Water stress is as there and it is going to increase. We are polluting our water also by way of uh, just throwing the industries, uh, industrial waste, especially um, in the developing world and other countries sometimes also this happens that it is not uh, properly, you see, uh, treated any waste and then it is just thrown into the water body, whether it is ocean, um, uh, whether it is rivers and so on. So this creates a lot of problems uh, for us. On top most, the issue is energy. We require energy for every developmental process, whether it is uh, industrial development, whether it is economic development, whether it is uh, for our education, whether it is for social development or infrastructure development. And if this energy is the quality of, uh, you see, power, it is not good. And uh, second thing is the uh, power is, uh, is not sufficient, then it will adversely affect our overall development. 
now when we talk one of the issue that is population increase it is uh, being seen that our planet is experiencing population explosion of the order of 7.9 billion from 2 billion in just 90 years and the it the studies research study predicts that the human population will continue to grow and it can uh, reach more than 11 billion by 2100 so and uh, which is again a very alarming uh, you see issue another uh, you see challenge which we are facing at the moment is that uh, the cities are growing and because of the migration of the people from the villages to the cities so what is happening the agriculture land or the forest land which is around the city that is converted to the uh, converted for using it for the building up the houses so cities are becoming big and uh, population is moving there but it becomes stressed up so in future it is predicted that the big cities they will be uh, occupying 1% of the surface of the earth and around 50% of the world population is going to live there because i have told you in my initial lecture that in our country also although during the time of independence more than 75% around 78% of the people in our country were living in the rural areas but now the situation has changed around 66 65 to 66% of the people are living in the rural areas and rest are living in the cities in the urban areas so it is uh, it has been researched that in the coming time this process will continue and 50% of the world population will reside in the urban areas and these pop this population will consume 75% of the total world's energy and thereby they will be creating pollution also by way of approximately 7% of 75% of the carbon dioxide emission now when because whenever we use any fossil fuel and like oil gas coal etc then Uh, when we use it for generation of electricity or for transportation purposes or for uh, in our industries then in addition to give us give us energy for the purpose for which it is being utilized it will also generate the greenhouse gases mainly the carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide methane sulfur dioxide and so on so it is not only that we are using uh, the source the energy source for generating as the power to for the various to meet our various energy demands but we are also generating the poisonous gases in our environment and now what is happening when these gases are increase are there they are going to affect the overall climate of the earth and this is done because of greenhouse effect now here what happens in the greenhouse effect because on the surface of the earth we have layer of the greenhouse gases now these greenhouse gases has certain properties that is they allow all the solar radiation to be transmitted through it but it do not allow these solar radiation when they hit the impact the surface of the earth they are converted to the infrared radiation or uh, long wave radiations so these greenhouse gases they have the property that they do not allow the greenhouse gases to be transmitted back to the environment rather they allow them to reflected back in the environment just outside our Uh, surface of the earth thereby what happens the heat radiations are just recirculated in that particular area uh, in that particular region and thereby generating the average increase in the temperature on the surface of the earth and thereby over the time it has been seen that the carbon dioxide uh, emission has also increased and thereby the average temperature on the surface of our earth has also increased it has been seen in the past year that around 36.6 gigatons of the carbon dioxide has been released and this is also um, say around 410 in parts per million and thereby the temperature average temperature on the surface of the earth has increased by 1.1 degree celsius the data shows that global energy related carbon dioxide emissions they are at 31.5 gigatons which contributed to the carbon dioxide reaching its highest ever annual concentration in the atmosphere of around 412 parts per million in 2020 which is around 50% higher than when the industrial revolution began so it means before the industrial uh, revolution when the machinery and uh, this electricity was not uh, uh, you see uh, majorly being used uh, and that on that time uh, the uh, environment was clean 
but when we use all these uh, fossil fuels then just see how much adverse impact it has generated by increase of carbon dioxide level and other poisonous gases level in the environment and thereby average temperature of the earth so lot of heat stress is there people die because of the heat stress our crops yield also become lesser because of the higher temperature on the surface of the earth average now what is these greenhouse gases doing what is the climate change what changes they are give, uh, they, uh, is being uh, suffer, uh, this is being uh, happening around one thing is uh, due to high temperature the glaciers they are the main source of water you see glaciers they are frozen mountains the with, uh, where the water is uh, you see stored in the form of ice and during winter because of the uh, snowfall and all this is they become a bit, the mountains are there and during this ice mountains you can say and then during summer when the temperature becomes high then these are uh, frozen ice it uh, it just melts and thereby they fill our rivers from where we can have water for various purposes for irrigation and for our living now but now because of the high average temperature these glaciers are melting at a much higher pace at higher pace thereby in the future it is said that because the source of the water will be less so less water will flow to our rivers so we'll be we'll be more stressed water stressed uh, in the world crops because they will not have the adequate water for irrigation their yield will also decrease then other thing is when the melting ice is increasing because of the high temperature so what happens when the uh, this uh, rivers this melted ice in the form of water it flows to the river and ultimately it joins the sea now because of the more water which is joining the sea now the average sea level is increasing so what is happening the land level is, uh, the land area is decreasing so we are already having higher population it is also going to increase so just imagine that in future if most of the coastal lines will be covered how we our humanity will uh, have the problem with respect to the housing and other issues also now another effect because of the climate change is change precipitation that is the rainfall and the snowfall which occurs it is now a, in a very different way as compared to say 30 years before now the rain is happening for a very short duration and the rain is having a, with a big you see uh, large um, uh, this uh, uh, amount of rain falls for a short duration so what happens more flooding takes place which also creates lot of issues with regard to crops with regard to problems in uh, water logging and so on so this is also and affecting the crops also a lot of hailstorm is there for small time large quantity of rainfall is there so that is not giving a good result now uh, severe droughts are occurring frequently uh, wildfires are occurring as you might have uh, read the news in california last year lot of fires were there there was a fire in australia in uh, biggest fire in alberta in canada few, few years back so all our forest area is also uh, impacted even our the ecology is also impacted and the living species the animals the insects the plants they also uh, the these also are getting uh, affected uh, because of the high uh, forest fires which is occurring so it uh, and because of this uh, droughts our crops are also yield is also re reducing and our drinking water shortage is also happening now another issue is with the climate changes now because of the average high temperature what is happening the um, heat and the uh, humid temperature that span is increasing right it is not raining continuously and temperature is also increasing but humidity is there so that is very good environment for the pests to uh, multiply for the mosquito to multiply and thereby creating health issues up for us chikungunya has increased yellow fever has increased dengue fever has increased jo humne aaj se 10 20 saale saal nahi itne issues bade dekhe the no so much human fatalities are occurring because of such diseases which are being caused because of the mosquito and other uc type of bacteria which is uh, happening multiplying at a at faster rate because of the uh, conditions that is hot and humid uh, you see climatic conditions are covering coming for a longer span of time so that is a very uh, you see uh, picture which shows what is happening around aur agar hum is tarah se hi we are using fossil fuel at a such a fast rate of for our economic development what will happen in future this will further multiply this will further further become more severe all these issues cyclones and all these things 
so we need to do something we need to change the way we are doing the things we need to adopt the, uh, the technologies the energy sources which are green which are non polluting so here comes the role of renewable energy sources so as you can see that in, in 2018 you see the data that uh, you can see uh, some of the, uh, the around 15% of the energy was extracted from the renewable energy sources which are the energy from the sun uh, from the nature from sun from wind from biomass and so on and rest of the energy for that petroleum natural gas or coal coal or nuclear energy was being used and now the uh, the nations and, and the people across the world they have become aware that we need to change our way the getting the things done we need to have go more in for the green fuels which are the renewable energy fuel and thereby it is projected that in coming time there will be increase in the use of renewable energy sources now we see the energy consumption pattern what is happening today in the developing world we with just 22% of the population we are still consuming 50% of the total population in the developed world sorry the people like in usa and european country which are constituting just 22% of the total world's population half of the energy is being used by them whereas the rest half of the energy in the total energy generated in the world is being consumed by the people living in underdeveloped and developing world so this energy consumption in the developing world is also increasing why because the industrialization is increasing globalization is increasing so more energy consumption is also increasing and this energy consumption is directly related to level of standard of living which is of course depends upon the level of our income so with time when level of income of any person or any household or, or on an average for any country increases the energy consumption also increasing so here it shows the next uh, point that is in our country also over the time the per capita electricity consumption has increased because of the increase in the level of income increase in the standard of living now it is 1300 kilowatt hour per year per person but when we compare this energy consumption in our country to the outside world china consumes 3.5 times more energy per capita per year as compared to our country and usa consume 11 times more energy as compared to the energy being consumed by our country so this slide shows how we are still dependent on uh, you see coal as a major source for power generation although you see in our country uh, we still uh, in the world we still have a good potential of and uh, harnessing the energy from the renewable energy sources that is energy by uh, from the hydro from the wind from the solar for the others but still we have to work further in this particular area so as to harness the renewable energy sources now this slide shows the extent of use of renewable energy sources for power generation the renewable energy electricity produced in uh, by 2018 26.2 energy was produced by using the renewable energy sources while 74% approximately was still based on the fossil fuels or nuclear energy when we see the various components of renewable energy various sources of renewable energy which were harnessed to generate the power it include hydropower 15.8% wind power of the order of 5.15% solar was around 2.4% biopass power 2.2% and other 0.4% and over the time it increased to 27% in 2019 and by 2020 the global electricity generation through renewable energy increased to 29% so as you can see that this has happened across various countries including our country the in that is generation of electricity by renewable energy sources and for this or across the world all nations they are making up the policies to harness the solar energy solar photovoltaic energy wind energy biomass energy so that in coming times uh, non polluting green energy sources are being used to a large extent so this shows that uh, this slide shows that how over the time from 2010 onwards till 220 how the this because of this realization we are moving more towards the renewable energy sources to meet our energy demands
so here this slide shows the energy consumption in our country that still when we talk of industry our major you see fuel used is oil natural gas or coal as compared to other uh, non uh, polluting energy sources in transportation you can see more than 95% is uh, oil being used uh, plus natural gas being used and uh, for residential also and for service and other sector also we are still dependent upon the non uh, the fossil energy sources now another issue with regard to this fossil fuel based energy sources is that we do not have enough oil natural gas or good quality of coal in our country so we rely on outside world in the uh, from outside world to import these energy sources more than 75 to 80% of the oil is being imported till now so just imagine we are dependent on the outside world because we do not have sufficient oil or natural gas or good quality coal in our country so we need to do something uh, we need to tap the uh, you see the sources of energy which we are in our country is blessed with that is solar energy energy from the wind energy from the hydro power plant uh, even the energy efficiency or energy uh, in our country is lower that is uh, you see uh, uh, the analogy is with respect to the or the way it is uh, expressed is in the form of energy intensity that is for producing one gdp that process uh, in our country if we uh, consume the energy it is 3. times higher than of that of japan 1.55 times more than in usa and on an average we are consuming 1.5 times of more energy for one gdp generation so this is another area that we have to go in for energy efficient practices processes machines in our country and another issue is that still we are faces the power shortage and uh, because of our energy demand growth is also increasing so we need to find the alternate energy sources to harness them in the way of renewable energy sources now as i have told you that because of all this climate change our even uh, you see our earth forest fresh water and marine environment they have reduced by 30% and it has been shown that over the time the energy consumption will is going to change it is going to go higher only in the coming time so what do we need to do if the way the things are doing we have to find out the solution for that if we are going to just follow the the way which we are doing today that is consuming not lot of fossil fuel then by 2050 it has been projected that average rise in temperature on the surface of earth will be 3 degrees celsius so which is which will be very devastating lot of issues will come water stress natural resources will be reduced and not severe disaster will occur if we will find out some ways to at least uh, harness the renewable energy sources being more energy efficient that that is really uh, that is uh, this you see our leaders they have pledged in paris climate change convention which was held in mid uh, 20 to, uh, 200 uh, say uh, 2000 year 2000 then what happened is they pledged that we need to do cut the emission we need to increase the energy efficiency if we all Uh, you see implement all these strategies across the world average temperature by 2050 on the surface of earth will rise to 2 degrees celsius and if we are very conservative we are very um, take a strict measures so that we reduce the uh, fossil fuel consumption and other and thereby reducing the carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions then we will achieve 1.5 degrees celsius rise in average temperature of the global uh, earth by 2050 but this is uh, with the present trend it is not uh, being seen as feasible so what uh, we, so we need to do uh, deploy the energy efficient measure and that is why we, uh, investments are being made in renewable investment need to be made in energy efficiency uh, this thing uh, practices and technologies to attain the uh, sustainable development and green environment for us now let us see what are these renewable energy sources and what are the conventional fossil fuel energy sources renewable energy sources the, the aspect is they are replenished continuously by nature so they have unlimited availability they do not pollute our environment and the example is energy from the sun 
energy from the wind and energy from the earth inside earth that is geothermal energy while non renewable sources of energy or conventional energy sources they are fossil fuel based energy sources like energy from the coal oil gas etc but these are limited in nature that is another uh, dimension of these resources that they have we have limited uh, amount of these uh, fuels uh, available to us and they are depleting it fast so we need to have the alternate energy sources to meet our energy demand and of course these energy use uh, through these sources generate the pollution so for our sustainable development uh, we need to which con uh, contains the environment that is uh, so, uh, and uh, we have to uh, you see look after the our environment also look after our social equity also and look uh, towards the economic development also so in few uh, what are the strategies which are being adopted today that is sustainable development strategies and these are interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars and for attaining the sustainable development renewable energy can contribute in a major way for the development uh, of the uh, getting the development in the way uh, by sustainable development strategy and greenhouse gas mitigation strategy now what are sustainable development goals these are the goals which have been uh, you see put forth by united nation and which we there are 17 sustainable development goal which we need to achieve by 2030 which uh, includes uh, uh, no poverty zero hunger good health quality education gender equality clean water decent work and life uh, and all ecology and other uh, you see partnership and so on and among all these 17 goals which all the almost more, more than 150 countries have joined hands and they are going to uh, adopt strategies to meet uh, the targets by 2030 of the sustainable development then number 7 goal is ensure access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all and number 13 goal is take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact so uh, these two goal particularly focus on to uh, promote the use of renewable energy sources when we see the energy consumption you see in the world average is 3000 kilowatt hour per person per year and in usa it is around 13000 of energy in units per person per year which is consumed so just see the how much energy is being consumed and how much uh, sources we require to generate it now if we generate the uh, you see power by the conventional way it will emit uh, waste heat also carbon dioxide nitrogen oxide carbon monoxide sulfur sulfur dioxide also and we have to invest around 5 crores or more for uh, installation of 1 megawatt power plant additional 2 uh, crore or more for its transmission and distribution system it takes 5 years for building up the plant and but if we want to conserve energy to save energy we just need one second that is switch off the appliances when not required at least let us do that now as i've told you an, uh, another issue with respect to the fossil fuel is that they are going to disappear soon they are present to us in the limited way so around 40 to 50 years after that we will not have a coal oil or other uh, sufficient quantity of other fossil fuel to meet our energy demand so what we need to do we need to increase the energy efficiency in our electric vehicles appliances we need to transform the power sector use more green renewable energy sources we need to adopt clean technology green infrastructure uh, e electric vehicles and so on we need to promote and adopt sustainable agriculture and agricultural and forestry practices so what are the green and renewable energy sources this is energy from the sun that is solar energy energy from the biomass that i have already told you organic matter which replenishes itself by nature the plants and the animals etc and so on mini hydro plants small hydro plants with few megawatt capacity they are the mini hydro plants then energy from the wind energy under the uh, surface of the earth and energy in the ocean so i am going to discuss mainly because of the uh, limited time uh, the commercially available energy sources renewable energy sources so before going uh, further i would like to uh, show you a small video film renewable energy use is on the rise and these alternative energy sources could hold the key to combating climate change what 
is renewable energy? Renewable energy is generated from sources that naturally replenish themselves and never run out. The most common sources are solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, and biomass. Over 80% of the total energy consumed by humans is derived from fossil fuels. However, renewables are the fastest growing source of energy in the world. Renewable energy has many benefits. First, it can combat climate change because it creates no direct greenhouse gas emissions. The only emissions that they produce are indirect, meaning those that result from manufacturing parts, installation, operation, and maintenance. But even those are minimal. Second, renewable energy can decrease pollution and therefore reduce threats to our health. Wind, solar, and hydroelectric systems create no air pollution emissions, and geothermal and biomass energy systems emissions are much lower than non-renewable energy sources. Third, renewable energy is a reliable source of power. Because renewable energy sources are, well, renewable, they will never run out. Once built, renewable facilities cost very little to operate and the fuel is often free. As a result, renewable energy prices tend to be stable over time. While renewable energy has many advantages, it is not without downsides. It is difficult for renewable energy sources to generate power on the same large scale as fossil fuels. Building wind farms and dams can disrupt wildlife and migration patterns and lead to ecological destruction. Both solar and wind energy are intermittent. They only generate power while the sun is shining or while the wind is blowing. Batteries can store excess energy for later use. However, they are often costly. While renewable energy presents some challenges, it also offers an environmentally friendly alternative to the greenhouse gas emissions and pollution of fossil fuels. And as advances in technology make renewable energy more accessible, affordable, and efficient, an end to climate change could be within our reach. So I hope uh, my slide is visible to all. Yeah, ma'am, it's ma visible. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So uh, when we talk of, I have just a small video which shows what are the, uh, you see, uh, promising, uh, uh, you see, uh, characteristics related to various renewable energy and what are the challenges also which are associated with any, you see, when we talk of any type of technology. But of course, research is being taken care uh, uh, taken up to resolve these issues. So when we talk of the largest source of energy, renewable energy, which is available on our earth, that is, in, uh, and especially in our country, that is uh, energy from the sun. You see, the energy from the sun is thousand times more than one we need. But only thing is we have not tapped it till now till now and it is uh, it just comes to on the surface of the earth by way of electromagnetic radiation uh, although 35 percent of the solar energy is reflected back into the space 18 percent is absorbed by the atmosphere because of the moisture there are clouds there because of the dust particles ozone layer is there but still in our country we receive good amount of solar energy that is 4.5 to 7 kilowatt hour per square meter and this can be harnessed to meet our energy demand. And we have got good potential of solar energy in our country that is 16 to 10 raised per 13 kilowatt hour per year. So we have got, uh, and this is the potential of energy which can be tapped uh, in our country. Now let us see how the energy from the sun is generated. It is because of the fusion reaction in the sun. Where, what happens here? We have four hydrogen ion uh, atoms which combines together and they form the helium atom. Now the mass of individual hydrogen atom is uh, higher as compared to the helium, uh, you see, uh, molecule which is formed. So this difference is mass is converted to energy and we know that is uh, due to the famous Einstein equation E is equal to mc square. The difference in the mass is convert converted to energy which comes to our form in the form of electromagnetic radiation in the visible region, ultraviolet region and heat region on the surface of the earth. 
uh, it takes around 8 minute although it reach, uh, to reach the surface of the earth although the speed of the you see uh, energy which come from, comes from the sun to earth is uh, 186000 miles per second when we see this energy which is received on the earth, ultraviolet radiation is 7%, visible is 44% and infrared uh, that is heat energy is 48%. Now uh, this energy can be uh, you see tapped in a various uh, forms so that it can give us energy to meet our energy demand. When we talk of uh, the, there are two types of energy which is present in the en energy from the sun. One is heat energy, another is this energy in the light that is by way of photons. Now this heat energy of the sun can be used for heating the water, for cooking the food, for drying the agriculture produce or for getting the distilled water. While the photovoltaic energy that is energy which is present in the form of photons in the light energy, they can be converted with a special material which is semiconductor material, usually silicon is there to the, uh, it can be stored in the batteries, it is DC uh, power and then it can be used for lighting purpose, for pumping of water and for generation of power. Now this uh, solar thermal energy, the main uh, you see use is by heating the uh, water. So what is here? We have flat plate collector. This is the heart of the solar water heater, which has a toughened glass on the top. We have pipes which carries water and it is insulated from the sides and from the bottom so that heat is trapped inside it. So what happens is it has a glazing which allows all the solar radiation to pass through it. And when it strikes uh, the blackened surface of the collector, it is converted to heat energy. Now the glass has property that it do not allow the heat radiation to pass through it. So the heat radiation, heat energy is uh, inside it is recirculated, thereby heating the water in which is carried by the pipes. So uh, this water heated can be stored in the tank and it can be collected as and when required. This tank is also insulated so that heat loss is not there. So uh, there are two types of uh, solar water heaters. One is thermosiphon type of solar water heater. Another is forced flow type of the solar water heater. In the thermosiphon uh, solar water heater, pumps are not required. Automatically, the flow of uh, hot water and cold water is there from the collector to the uh, tank. And this is, uh, but here, the thing is for uh, getting the thermosiphon effect because of the density uh, gradient, because of the temperature gradient in the water, it, the, it, it should be one feet, this distance. That is the bottom of the our, uh, collector, solar flat collector, uh, sorry, top of the solar flat collector and bottom of the water tank, it should be one feet, this distance. So this helps in the hot water automatically from the solar collector to get collected on the upper part of the water tank, while cold water, which is at the bottom of the uh, hot water tank, it flows automatically to the lower part of the uh, flat plate collector. Now, another important thing is because we want to tap the solar energy to the maximum extent. So it has to be placed in a certain way. So for that, orientation is one of the uh, important aspect which we should, we, should, we should know where to place our, so, uh, how to place our solar appliances so that to harness the solar energy maximum throughout the year. So like in our country, it should always face the south. Another is the tilt angle. This is the orientation where they should face. Another is the tilt angle. So tilt angle depends upon the latitude of the place. So um, that is uh, we, we, uh, uh, latitude of the place. As you can see, this is the tilt angle. This is solar PV panel. So we want uh, that maximum solar radiation should be harnessed. So that can be done. It can be collected when the sun rays strike our solar appliance at right angles, as you can see. Now, solar collector is tilted away from the perpendicular uh, alignment to the sun. Uh, we know that uh, sun, it revolves around and revolution uh, revolves and rotates around the surface of the earth. So it is, we have to keep it at certain tilt. So optimum tilt angle for the solar energy system, it depends upon the latitude and uh, also the application. For example, uh, when we want to use a solar water heater, so we generally use it in the winter season. So that it should be placed in the latitude of the place plus 15 degrees Celsius. Because this orientation of sun is like that, that right angle will occur when this particular tilt angle is uh, there. Because uh, we use the water in the winter only from the solar water heater. 
if you are using uh, solar photovoltaic appliances then what happens in the photovoltaic the this uh, our solar cell it should face the sun always it should always be perpendicular to the sun so throughout the year if we want to trap it uh, the energy that it should be placed at the latitude of the uh, place for example uh, like in in, in our con uh, in delhi the latitude is around 30 degrees so solar water he heater they are placed at for 30 plus 15 45 degree whereas when we want to use the solar uh, pv application solar photovoltaic application it is latitude of the place generally that is around 30 degrees or so now another type of solar water heater which is available is evacuated tube type because what happened is in the flat plate type of solar water heater copper uh, you see pipes were used or uske karan kya hai ki when water is having a uh, hardness so when hot water moves in the pipes the hardness of that in the form of calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate it gets sticks around the inside the diameter of our pipes so what happens the pipes get clogged so uh, then the water flow will be restricted and our system became fail this happened in uh, the haryana and punjab wherever the hard water was available so what happened over the time a new concept came that is uh, based on the borosilicate based glass tube solar water heater because we do not have this issue regarding uh, this thing the clogging of pipe because of the hardness of the water so here what happens is the collector is made up of the double layer of the borosilicate glass tubes which are evacuated there is a vacuum in between these two tubes so this vacuum uh, act as a insulation and outer surface of the inner wall is black colored so that all the solar radiation which falls on it they are converted to the heat radiation and then this heat is passed to the uh, water which is inside the tubes to heat the water now it has been found that if we deploy 100 liters capacity of solar water heater which is suitable for a family of four persons because as a thumb rule 25 liters of hot water is required per person per day so this uh, type of solar uh, uh, water heater will save four to six units of electricity per day and it will save 1500 units of electricity in a year because in our country we are having around 300 sunny days it will also help to prevent the emission of 1.5 tons of carbon dioxide per year because this is the green energy so the life of the system is around 15 to 20 years and payback period is in 3 to 4 year the break even point occurs and after that around 10 to 12 years that uh, will all will be help you in having the economic uh, you see uh, uh, yeah, uh, Uh, this thing benefit also because all the units of electricity which you have to pay that you will not have to pay when you are uh, using the solar water heater another application of solar energy is solar cooker so this is the box type of solar cooker where you can boil bake and roast uh, but you cannot fry or make chapatis so this type of solar cooker is also having a same principle we are uh, black uh, you see container and which is isolated from the top and sides we have a glass on the top to allow the solar radiation and they are converted to heat radiation so there are four pots so where we can keep dal rice and other things to cook and of course the mirror helps in uh, again focusing more light towards the containers another type of solar cooker is a dish type solar cooker it is uh, as you can see it is hemispherical in shape so it is having a perchure diameter of 1.4 meter and uh, all the solar rays they are uh, reflected to its center that is focal point so wahan pe we keep the dish for cooking the pressure cooker so uh, here we can boil 2 to 3 liters of water in an hour because we can achieve the higher temperature as compared to box type of solar cooker around 350 to 400 degree celsius can be achieved which can be uh, used for frying also for cooking in a faster way so this is how it works all the solar radiation it is focused towards the focal point where we keep the cooking dish another you see uh, we can also have a cooking system uh, uh, in the where we when we want to cook for a more number of people that is in the religious places or even in your hostel mess and so on that is known as solar steam cooking system so here we have certain dishes which are known as scheffler dishes as you can see one of the dishes shown here these are elliptically shaped parabolic solar concentrator which are aligned in the east west direction and this is the receiver so what happens is sunlight falls on the receiver and there is a water this water is converted to steam and this steam is taken to the kitchen where uh, we have double jacketed you see uh, 
utensil so steam flows in that utensil and cooks the food this chefler dishes they are made up of high quality glass mirrors uh, and they are having 16 meter square of surface area there is a automatic tracking system so that they should always face the sun there is a sensor there is a motor so they always face the sun thereby generating the sufficient heat to generate the steam and it has been found three to four dishes of chefler dishes they are sufficient for cooking of food or of around 250 to 300 people as you can see these are the steam which is pipes which is coming from the shafter uh, dishes and this is double jacketed uh, uh, special utensils where the food is cooked now this particular shafter dishes can also be used in industries for uh, boiler feed water preheating for washing also in laundries for oil heating in cooking or industrial applications and also for milk pasteurization another technology is solar still where what we do is we allow the sun uh, light to be used for getting the distilled water where the water is brackish that is not clean there this can be deployed it can be deployed for industries also for hospitals also for sterilization and where there is a garages or an automobile workshop for battery also we know we use distilled water there also we can use it here also the principle is same the solar energy is, is comes in the container there is a air tight and water tight container it is filled with the brackish water a small layer so water uh, the sunlight comes inside the enclosure thereby heating inside uh, this enclosure the solar still the water gets evaporated because of the heat and because the temperature of glass is less than inside temperature this, uh, this gets uh, condensed and the water droplets is formed in this particular inside of the glass so this trickles down and we can get the purified water distilled water of the order of 3 liters per day per square meter now another application of solar energy is by way of photovoltaic energy which is conversion of sunlight into electricity through photovoltaic cell which is made up of silicon alloys now these photons when they strike the photovoltaic cell they absorb uh, they are absorbed by this particular uh, semiconductor uh, material and they generate the dc electricity Uh, and uh, one solar cell gives just 0.4 cells so 0.4 volts so we have to connect in series and parallel connection so that they can get give us sufficient uh, current and voltage so which can be used for to meet our energy demand by way of lighting and so on for 36 cells uh, we get 16 volt 1.88 amperes and 30 peak watt uh, you see uh, can be uh, harnessed energy so this shows the how it, the working principle of solar pv cell these are the sunlight rays yellow one which dislodges the electrons uh, in the uh, junction and when there these are the uh, front contacts fingers metallic fingers which uh, you see uh, which allows the electrons uh, to pass uh, they are collected through it and then in the load the we can get the electricity so there are uh, uh, the research is also taking place for uh, material of solar cell because the monocrystalline silicon cells are generally being used or polycrystalline silicon cells are generally being used today they are vapor based technology but the efficiency is around 17 to 18% commercially however in laboratory it is achievable to say uh, 40% or so there are another uh, type of material also being used like amorphous thin film uh, silicon which are which are flexible as you can see and they are used in the facade of the building so building construction hai usme bhi instead of using the glass or other material they are being used thin film are used so that the energy of the building can also be met through the solar energy of course latest uh, you see work is being done for getting the green uh, cells that is dye sensitized solar cells Uh, quantum dot sensitized solar cells organic photo cells and so on so as to have the more efficiency and with the green uh, you see material so when we see agar humne apne ghar mein we want to install the system solar pv to generate power so how much space is required around 100 square feet shadow free space is required for installing of 1 kilowatt system of the uh, solar pv power plant and this will generate 4 units of electricity per day 
so depending upon the place which you are having so this had uh, very much promising this technology and people are installing solar pv plants in their rooftops now of course it, this uh, can also be used for getting the light where we have this uh, you see this is solar lantern there is a battery at the bottom there is a led light and this is the a panel so when we uh, panel is uh, facing to the sun connected to battery battery gets charged and then at night this battery can be switched on to get the led give the light to the led and similarly in the home lighting a number of lights will be more street light is also you might have seen now it has become very common people are adopting this technology whether it is in villages or in cities where number of uh, you see solar module size is bigger because throughout the night we want to have a solar light so 75 uh, uh, watt of the solar module is generally used with the battery of 12.8 volt and 60 ampere uh, and with led lamps another application of solar energy is to uh, you see pump the water uh, where it is used for operating the dc surface centrifugal monoblock pump set for lifting the water uh, for minor irrigation and so on uh, here of course the capacity is more required more uh, for pumping the water so we have to use uh, 1800 watts of solar pv panel and uh, when with 2 uh, horsepower of centrifugal dc monoblock or ac submersible pump with inverter and and uh, the discharge which we will get is of the order of 1.40 lakh liter per day and with the head suction head of 6 meters and dynamic head of uh, 10 meters now when we compare with uh, the solar wa pv water pumping with the uh, diesel generator based set of uh, 2 kva so the advantage is that with payback period of just 4 years afterwards all the um, you see uh, money spent on the fuel will be saved before which we have to spend 41000 rupees per year for pumping the water now as i have told you another very good application of solar power plant is that uh, with respect to the uh, generation of the power so this is uh, we can directly convert it sunlight to electricity by the silicon cells and then we have inverter because this is dc electricity which is generated it through inverter this is converted to dc to ac and then it is connected to grid uh, and from the grid we it gets uh, we get the power so another system is what we can do is we can also have energy storage through the battery bank rather than giving to the grid let it be stored in the battery and then through inverter then this then we can use it at our home or in another system we have uh, the system is hybrid system what we do is we allow uh, first battery to store energy then excess if solar energy is there then that is connected to the uh, electric utility to the grid so this is various systems are there where we can uh, use the solar energy by one way or another through battery or without battery also so this slide shows that uh, it can be uh, uh, through the battery and when battery is uh, fully charged then the extra power from the sun energy can be uh, through inverter can be connected to the grid another uh, way of uh, harnessing the solar energy of course this is more under research where we place uh, mirrors or other uh, you see lenses so as to uh, get the concentrated heat uh, as and then as in the conventional power plant we can uh, generate the power here special reflectors like parabolic reflectors are used to generate the power but again lot of you see um, investment is required so only you see only uh, pilot on pilot basis at one or two places in usa or other developed world this has been installed because we require large field large investment because they require number of uh, parabolic uh, trough and they needs to be tracked they should always face the sun so and uh, and then they are focused the energy is focused to the top tower where we have a working fluid and which is uh, which produces the steam and then uh, of course as in the conventional steam turbine generator it is the electricity is produced but investment is very high so this is uh, not uh, being adopted so far now another renewable energy sources energy from the biomass and i have already discussed with you in uh, the previous lecture around it and we know it is a biomass organic matter which is produced by the plants and its derivatives and uh, we have got lot of potential uh, to harness this renewable energy source uh, by and uh, this can be done by way of uh, thermochemical reaction that is gasification where we heat the biomass in limited oxygen or through in the absence of air we'll allow it to ferment 
and thereby uh, we can uh, get the power so as i have discussed with you earlier also the gasifier is very promising technology where the diesel uh, when we use in the diesel engine we can replace the diesel up to 70% by the producer gas which is produced in the uh, in the gasifiers and this is can be used in the various industries all uh, successfully it has been seen and uh, this is a very good technology even in the rural and remote areas for generation of power in the biogas plant we allow the biomass to ferment with in the absence of air uh, where we uh, get uh, the gas Uh, after fermentation that is methane main co uh, constituent is methane 55 to 65% in addition to that we also get the organic manure now uh, when we uh, use the organic manure it has been found uh, that uh, the average yield has increased by 10 to 20% because it improves the soil fertility and we also the advantage is that we get the uh dung uh, uh 70 to 75% of the original weight of dung is converted into slurry and uh, which can be used as organic manure in addition to the gas now the biogas it can be produced by various type of biomass which includes uh, plant based as well as animal based and this gas is colorless gas just like lpg gas although it has uh, the calorific value is lower than that so this gas can be harnessed in kvic uh, type of biogas plant or in the deen bandhu type of biogas plant although the cost of deen bandhu model of the biogas plant is less but the size is also it's limited to around uh, say 6 cubic meter so this biogas is having a good calorific value and when we compare it with lpg it is equal to 0.43 kg of lpg and 1.46 kg of coal of course the production of biogas it depends upon the climatic condition so in the coastal area where temperature is good say 30 to 35 degrees celsius then the 30 days is the time required for the uh, biogas to be generated now depending upon what is the purpose for, uh, like for cooking we want to use it or we want to use for electricity generation so uh, they based on that we should be able to decide the uh, you see capacity of the uh, biogas plant which we need to install for cooking for example we require 0.24 cubic meter per day per person while for generation of electricity for one unit we require 0.50 cubic meter per hour and uh, now another issue is with respect to biogas whether we can compress it as we are compressing the lpg of course it is under research there is lot of issues because this biogas it liquefies at a pressure of 47.4 kg per cm and the critical temperature required is minus 82.1 degrees celsius so it is not economical because we have to clean the gas lot of impurities are there we have to compress it and special high pressure storage bottle are required and it is uh, difficult to transport these heavy bottles so till now we have to generate or uh, use the power, uh, the biomass power where it is available and for that one of the case study which uh, which is there is biomethanation power plant in ludhiana which is running running successfully and it is uh, the capacity is of the order of 1 megawatt another uh, you see uh, renewable energy source is wind energy it is because we know it is air in motion and it is results from the differential heating of the land and its atmosphere by the sun because you know sun heats different part of the earth at different rate whether it is uh, our ocean water bodies or earth and so on so what happens is and at the poles there is very less sun while at the equator the sunlight is more so air circulates from cold to warm areas thereby produces winds so this wind can be converted to mechanical or electrical energy in our country we have got good potential of wind energy where that is 45000 megawatt so wind is uh, resulted because of the radiation of the sun it heats the surface of the earth and we know that it creates the temperature difference between land water and air because of the different physical properties that is density is different it affects their respective ability to absorb heat and uh, thereby the hot air rises it expands and becomes less dense and it is replaced by the cooler air and heat air rises from the temperature it moves towards the north and south poles and thereby circulation of air or wind is formed now to tap or harness this wind energy we have to use the wind turbines what are wind turbines they are the rotary engine in which the kinetic energy of a moving uh, you see wind or air is converted to mechanical energy by causing the blade or uh, rotor to rotate 
इट इज जस्ट लाइक ऑपोजिट ऑफ फैन जस्ट एज ए ब्लोर होता है घर में ऐसे होता है सो वॉट एपन्स द टर्बाइन ब्लेड दे स्पिन बिकॉज ऑफ द विंड एंड इट मेक्स एनर्जी इन स्टेड ऑफ एनर्जी टू मेक विंड सो विंड रोटेट्स द टर्बाइन ब्लेड so it spins the shaft which is connected between the uh, our turbine which is connected to generator and thereby the electricity is generated so these are the two type of forces which act on the blades this is the blade special you see design of blades are there so that there is a drag and lift two type of forces acts the wind when strikes these blade lift forces then the force which is perpendicular to the original flow of direction while drag is in line with the original line flow and thereby resultant this force is uh, direction the force is caused which uh, results in rotating of the blades on the turbine so this is shows the construction of the wind turbine we have hub and we have blades which are connected to the hub and this is connected to the shaft right so the gears are there to increase the speed of uh, to 1200 to 1800 rpm for generator this is the generator and generally induction type of generator is used and uh, for this and uh, so and there are controller also because if very high temperature uh, speed is there or less uh, speed of the uh, wind is there so it accordingly it, uh, it it you see regulates the working of the wind turbine so there are two types of wind turbine one is horizontal axis another is the vertical axis so this is the horizontal axis they are most commonly used because they are having high efficiency as compared to this vertical axis right this is the vertical axis so which is perpendicular to the surface of the earth horizontal axis is this shaft which where the uh, plate rotate it is parallel to the surface of the earth so uh, uh, the horizontal uh, of course it has it, its uh, we know it is its advantages because a greater efficiency is there so they are deployed uh, to uh, and adopted to a large extent uh, now let us see it is a very big you see when we talk of uh, aero turbines they are very quite big in size so just to give an idea a typical 600 kilowatt of wind turbine the, it has a rotor diameter of around 44 meters and it uh, the area is 1500 square meters so why is it so because larger the area which is swept by the wind through the blade more energy it will give it will be as you can see the it is ha uh, half mb square you see the energy so it is square of the root diameter the turbine which is uh, so it gives four times more energy larger the diameter more energy it will give and minimum uh, you see uh, the wind uh, speed is around 3 meter per second which is required for this system so before going further i will just uh, show you one film regarding the wind energy Well, as low tech as you can get, those old windmills are the predecessors for new modern wind turbines that generate electricity. The same wind that used to pump water for cattle is now turning giant wind turbines to power cities and homes. Okay, have a look at this wind farm in the California desert. A hot desert next to tall mountains, an ideal place for a lot of wind. Here's another one on the windy prairies of Wyoming. Now today's wind turbines are much more complicated machines than the old prairie windmills, but the principle is the same. Both capture the wind's energy. Okay, here's how it works. First, a wind turbine blade works sort of like an airplane wing. Blowing air passes around both sides of the blade. The shape of the blade causes the air pressure to be uneven, higher on one side of the blade and lower on the other. And that's what makes it spin. The uneven pressure causes the blades to spin around the center of the turbine. On the top, there's a weather vane that's connected to a computer to keep the turbine turned into the wind so it captures the most energy. Now, the blades are attached to a shaft, which only turns about 18 revolutions a minute. And that's not nearly fast enough to generate electricity by itself. So, the rotor shaft spins a series of gears that increase the rotation up to about 1,800 revolutions per minute. And at that speed, the generator can begin to produce electricity. So, why are wind turbines so tall? Well, the higher up you go, the windier it is. More wind naturally means more electricity. Larger turbines can also capture wind energy more efficiently. The blades can sweep a circle in the sky with a diameter longer than a football field. 
Now, what's really cool is that even a small wind farm like this one in Wyoming can generate enough electricity to power more than 9,000 homes. And larger farms can provide much more clean energy for our homes and businesses. And it's not just on land that turbines can capture the wind. Our oceans and the Great Lakes provide a reliable and consistent source of wind that we can capture and turn into electricity. The Energy Department is supporting innovative offshore wind projects that will help build some of the first offshore wind turbines in U.S. waters. As the wind energy industry continues to grow, offshore development has the potential to significantly boost domestic renewable energy production, especially in coastal areas. With more than 50% of the U.S. population living within 50 miles of a coastline, capturing wind off America's shores has the potential to provide energy to countless homes and businesses. Wind energy, on land or offshore, a reliable and renewable clean energy source, helping move America toward energy independence. So, so you see that how uh, effective it is, uh, the uh, wind energy, to meet our energy demand in our country also. You see, uh, we are uh, promoting the wind energy and we are the third highest uh, user of wind energy in the world because of the initiation which has been taken by our government to harness the energy from the wind. Now, another renewable energy source which is available is uh, to us is mini hydro power plant. Here, generally, there are few megawatt capacity power plants comes under the mini hydro plant. But the advantage of this is, as compared to our conventional hydro energy plant, is that because they are small in capacity, so we, there is no deforestation or submergence of the region. And smaller, just with a small period, they can be installed. You see, big plants, they require around four to five years for installation. Then again, we don't have to, uh, you see, clear out the space. So no resettlement problems for the people in, living in that vicinity is, uh, is there. Uh, and of course, since uh, the energy can be uh, the produced at, at that particular site can be uh, transmitted there also. So there is an elimination of the long transmission system. And this is a decentralized energy generation, a very promising and very, you see, effective way to generate the electricity. So it is very suitable for the remote and hilly areas where there is issues with regard to uh, installation of the transmission lines. And, and this can be used where even the head of the water is below three meters or water discharge is less, that is around 80 cubic meter per second. Generally, we can uh, further class classify these plants up to 100 kilowatt capacity as micro hydro. Mini hydro is up to 2 uh, megawatt or 2000 kilowatt and small hydro is up to uh, 25,000 kilowatt capacity. Now, when uh, we have got good potential around more than 4,000 potential sites uh, from where we can install these uh, mini hydro plants and uh, 15,000 megawatt is the uh, potential of uh, harness this energy. For low head and large projects, horizontal Kaplan type of turbines are used while for high head and low water flow projects, belt and wheel type is being used. And this slide shows that how much uh, you see uh, advantages, economical advantage is associated with the uh, power plant with uh, small or micro hydro power plant. When we, uh, this is a case study of one megawatt plant where investment required is around five to six crores. Power generation will be three lakh units per year. And within two years, it can be installed and be operational, that is gestation period. And just within four to five years, we will get the payback of the investment made. And after that, because its life is around 40 to 50 years, for the rest of the time, say 25, 30 or 40 years or so, all the, uh, you see, uh, economical advantage will be there. So a lot of company, private players are coming in this particular arena and they are, uh, you see, installing the mini hydro plant. There is a bidding of sites uh, of these mini hydro plants and thereby a lot of companies are coming up and they have installed the mini hydro plants in our country. When we see our country has a very good potential of various renewable energy sources, which can be harnessed to generate uh, power. Solar power unit is one of the highest, uh, you see, uh, potential in our country. Then wind power, a lot of potential is there. Then we also have a potential for small hydropower up to 20,000 uh, megawatt, then biopower, biomass power, and waste to energy power. So one lakh is the megawatt is the potential of solar power, which can be uh, harnessed. 
and we, uh, when we see uh, we are uh, we have initiated uh, the uh, you see progress and technologies and power uh, power generation through renewable energy sources if you see that uh, by 2019 in gigawatts 9800 gigawatt hours have been generated by uh, the deploying the technologies for tapping the renewable energy sources hydro it is more than 8600 gigawatt hour nuclear is 3000 gigawatt hour but primarily still we are using coal with 95000 gigawatt hour by the fossil fuels and we see uh, when we see renewable energy uh, large hydro contributes around more than 13 12 to 13% wind energy is the, after that the wind energy has been harnessed and then solar power has been harnessed to meet the energy demand now uh, uh, you see the total installed capacity of our country with respect to uh, the energy scenario is 386888 megawatt as to uh, 21 by 21 where state sector 25.2 percent is the contribution central sector is 27% contribution around and 48% is the private sector contribution and over the time you see that we have increasing the use of various renewable energy sources for the generation of the power and when we see the contribution of various uh, sources of energy fuels coal is the dominant what 52.6% of the coal is being used a lignite it is 1.7% gas contributes 66.5% to generate the power and diesel is 0.1% and renewable energy uh, uh, hydro a small hydro around 12% nuclear is around 1.8% and renewable energy sources is of the order of 25 to 26% so this, their contribution is increasing over the time wind energy if you see individual the solar and wind energy is 38.52% and we are the fourth largest wind producer in the world solar energy uh, around 44% has been tapped a small hydropower uh, 23 uh, 24% has been tapped and biopower we have 47% of the order of uh, you see 1 lakh 171 megawatts have been used while waste to energy 388 uh, megawatts have been installed uh, that is 10% of the total potential has been harnessed and biogas plant around 42% has been uh, you see installed till uh, july 2021 so you see still we have long way to go if you see less than 50% overall or 27 to 30% has been harnessed till now so more work can be taken up so we have to be aware about the potential of these sources we have to be aware of the advantages of these sources and so we need to tap these resources in a large way in our country we have special ministry also to promote this energy sources that is ministry of new and renewable energy there is uh, also we have agency erida that is indian renewable energy development agency which a source uh, which is a financer of green energy sources and by 2030 our country has uh, given the target to achieve half of its energy from the renewable energy sources so as to increase its non polluting energy capacity to 500 gigawatts and net zero energy uh, uh, emission target we uh, have targeted to achieve by 2070 so you see if when we talk of renewable energy target highest is the target to achieve the energy by harnessing the energy from the sun that is 100 gigawatt 60 gigawatt from the wind 10 gigawatt uh, from the biomass and 5 gigawatt from the small hydro plant so we in our country are having a giving the policy support increasing the investment and uh, using the advanced technologies and also investing in r&d to promote the use and deployment of these technologies Uh, now why the we need to go in for renewable energy sources because it has got lot of advantage it improves the access to clean energy sources balance the use of fossil fuel thereby saving them for other application for future generation for sustainable development it also helps in reducing the pollution and emission uh, from the conventional energy system it reduces the dependency and minimize spending on the imported fuels further many renewable technologies they are suitable and for the rural remote areas Uh, decentralized energy generation uh, like uh, rural areas where energy is not that much you see power is uh, there is a lack of power uh, and it is required for the development process so thereby when we install these small uh, you see micro uh, generation uh, units they can contribute to the local economy and they create the local jobs also 
so thank you this was from my side uh, regarding the renewable energy sources and uh, what are uh, its advantages and how it is being used uh, and what are the technologies which are being deployed to harness these energy sources Thank you.